Good morning. My name is Rosario Justi de Perez. I am an architect and an urban designer. I work and live in Venezuela. The project I'm presenting today is a small scale project located on the north, center north uh, coast of Venezuela in an area that surrounds a major port. Your design challenge in poor urban areas is, a, is achieving change while preserving. And that's something we have to keep in mind. What do we have to preserve? The existing social web that developed alongside the chaotic built form. Within that social web, there are many things that are valuable for residents. And also we have to preserve the existing structures that are part of the community's collective memories and identity. We have the task of upgrading life quality with in mind having the preservation of all the so sociocultural networks. Upgrading through a design project was used recovering last geographic features, always covered by the endless occupations that happens when this informal, um, informal occupations takes place, occupy endless pieces of land. We also have the task of reinforcing the identity of the settlement and also the other task that becomes a little bit difficult is providing the new services that residents need. One of the main problems we have also is the vacant land. There's scarce vacant land because Occupation nearly has taken all the available space. Here we have some examples of the three late works we've been working on. This is Los Claveles, that's the one I'm presenting today. Okay, and we have other projects similarly. We have, have the same approach for this, Paramaconi and Monaga, and there is also another project here for Bellavista Cagua. For this all, we have been using the same approach. A major task that we have to overcome is the lack of vacant land. So we use ArcGIS tools to search for vacant land. And also, we have the inspiration of Paul Virilo, a French architect and philosopher, who speaks about inhabiting the inhabitable, giving a lesson about the use of interstitial land. He is a real polemic architect. However, some of his writings really gives clues about some of a very uh, effective approach that we can use. When land is scarce, the interstitial landscape can become a resource for developing community activities. Your design project for the poor, I guess, is the combination of two urban actions, developing the urban interstices or upgrading the existing infrastructure. We have here a map of Los Claveles, the, the one the project I'm showing today. And we can see we opened some windows to show some of the insertions we made. In this case, this is a community center or a cable car. 
we have the root for the cable car, or the insertion of a sports area. There are much more of those. This was some examples. There are also the upgrading of the existing infrastructure that allows us restoring lost geographic features and or salvaging elements of existing infrastructure with iconic values. Here we have an example of, of, in a space, in a site that was flooded and mud covered nearly the whole structures. There was a roof slab left where a community building used to exist. So we decided to recover the place. It had a special meaning for the residents. So this is how we decided to build over the slab. Engineers saying it was possible. So this is what we provided. The community was really excited about having a new building in that location. Then we have the need to use the urban industries model to develop the leftover spaces. This is a very simple way of presenting what we did overlapping watercourses, slopes, and vegetation to obtain an area suitable for urban development. This will be the basis for the next step where we overlap the built areas with the areas suitable for urban development. And in that way, we have our model of urban statistics. And this is the basis for developing the geodesign proposal. the model of urban interstices, and over that, this was the basis for our geodesign proposal. Sorry, I was picked one. So here's our new design proposal. And from there on, we went to our scenarios for change. These scenarios for change help a lot. The community see how we integrated within the surrounding areas in a friendly way. We also use some views that we developed using ArcGIS Pro, colorful, and that I gave better ideas and complemented the views. The scenario for change displays the occupation of the urban interstices with urban services and the evolution of the residential urban fabric. The scenarios for change should be adjusted surgically. And there is something we have to tell about regulations. Regulations in this type of development stands and begin from the initial stage, from where they are. There's no way going backwards, because otherwise we are against what we are saying of preserving. And from there on, we develop the regulations. Thresholds usually is, are related only with height setbacks between buildings, and also rules for attachment. These are all my last conclusions towards the left panel. This is kind of the discipline and 
doctrine we have. Pursue change for the sake of improvement can lead to foreseen and irreversible social change. We have to avoid irreversible social change. And using Bill Miller, the purpose of design is to facilitate life. This for the poor people really hits them in the middle of the heart because they want to facilitate life. Then if we have to facilitate life, let's do it in a beautiful way. We have to overcome the general belief that urbanism for the poor is poor urbanism. You should see what government buildings do when they are working with poor urbanism. We have to give value to urban aesthetics as a basic component of geodesign scenarios for change. This is the work of Esri Venezuela geodesign team. Thank you very much.